Hello everybody and welcome to the second video in our series of practice journal entries. In this video we're going to be talking about expanding some of our basic journal entries where we have multiple debits or credits. So that's what we're going to take a look at here. Now as a reminder for anybody who did not see video number one, this series is all about practicing these journal entries, understanding the debit credit rules, understanding the basic rules for journal entries. This series will be about 20 videos going through progressively more difficult accounting journal entries. The idea here is that understanding how to perform these journal entries is fundamental to understanding accounting in general. You're going to need to use these journal entries throughout really all of accounting, but certainly the fir first four, I'd say, four or so accounting courses you're going to have. So we're really just going to practice all different types of journal entries, and we're going to look at the impact on the accounting equation as well as how to do the journal entry itself. So just a reminder, debits are always going to be on the left side of a journal entry. All debits have to come first. Credits are always on the right side. They're indented, and they come after all of our debits. Now, this is going to become more important in this video because now we're going to see we might have, let's say, two debits or one credit, and that's what this second bullet point is saying. There can be a different quantity of debit versus credit entries. We could have two debits and one credit as long as the total dollars of all of those debits equal the total dollars of all of the credits. The normal balance reminders, we're going to see this throughout. We have the DEAD, the dead mnemonic, showing us what accounts need to be debited. And CLRC, whether you call that clerk or Clark, whatever works for you, these three accounts have normal credit balances. Understanding the credit, the normal balance rules is important to doing journal entries because you increase an account by using its normal debit balance you decrease it by using the opposite. Now we're going to see some of our journal entries might have both accounts being increased, one with a debit, one with a credit. They might have both accounts being decreased, again, one with a debit, one with a credit. Or you might have a situation where one account increases, one account decreases. That's fine as long as the debit credit rules are followed. Now the journal entry steps we're using here First, we have to identify what accounts and what amounts are involved. We, we analyze the transaction. Then we have to identify whether each account will be increased or decreased. And then step three is the integral piece. This is where those rules come into play. We have to identify how do we increase or decrease each specific account by analyzing the normal balances. And then step four, as a check, we have to ensure that the debits and credits in total in each journal entry balance out. So this is the second in the series. It's a little more complicated. Transaction number one. A new investor invested $5,000 in cash and $20,000 worth of land into the company in exchange for common stock of the company. So there are two different things being invested and only one thing being returned, the common stock. So what's going to happen here is we have two different assets that are coming into the company. Cash for 5000 land for 20000 totaling $25,000 of investment. And that goes over to the capital side. Common stock is increasing by 25000 So here's our first journal entry where we have more than two entries. We have cash and land that are both assets. They're both being increased, so they're both going to have to be debited. 5000 and 20000 Capital or common stock is also being increased, and that's going to be a $25,000 credit to match the total of $25,000 worth of debit. So that's important to understand. It's not the fact that we have two debits and one credit that matters. It's the fact that we have $25,000 worth of debits and $25,000 worth of credits. Now, just as a reminder, as we're going through these transactions, if you want to practice them on your own before we see the solution, go ahead and pause the video, and then uh, we can come back and talk about the solution. You can restart the video after that. So transaction number two. 
the company purchased equipment in the amount of 40000 and on account after paying a required $10,000 down payment. So remember we talked about that terminology on account or on credit. What that means is that cash is not being paid for that particular portion. Instead, it's going to be set up in either an accounts payable or a notes payable, depending on the situation. And part of it depends on how long they expect to take to pay that. So we have a few things here. The equipment was in the amount of $40,000 but they were required to pay a down payment of 10000 in cash. The down payment is going to be cash. So we have $40,000 worth of equipment coming into the company. That's an asset. But we have $10,000 worth of cash, the down payment, going out of the company. So net, we have $30,000 increased to assets. And the other $30,000 is either going to be a notes payable or an accounts payable, depending on how long they expect to pay. We're just going to say that's notes payable for right now. That's a liability. So the $30,000 net assets have increased, and there's a $30,000 notes payable increase. So equipment is an asset. We want to increase it, so we have to debit it. Cash is an asset. But we want to decrease that, so we use the opposite of the debit. We credit the cash. Notes payable is a liability. We're increasing it, so we use its normal credit balance. Transaction number three. The company paid the following cash expenses. $3,000 salaries, $1,500 rent, $400 interest. They paid them in cash. So they're recording expenses, and they're recording the subsequent cash payment. So first of all, you have to add the three together to get $4,900 that's being paid in cash total. So cash asset is decreasing. The expenses, remember in the first video, we talked about how the expenses themselves are increasing, and that has a negative impact on equity. So that negative total impact offsets the negative impact to assets. And we're just listing them out here. So in this case, expenses are debit balance accounts. We're trying to increase them. So we use that debit balance. Debit all of these expense accounts, three of them, for their proper amounts. And then we want to credit cash to reduce it. It's an asset has a normal debit balance, but we want to decrease it, so we credit, we use the opposite of its normal balance. We credit cash for 4,900, we are in balance. That's the key thing there. Transaction number four, the company provided services to a customer valued at 1,500. A $500 down payment was required from the customer. So the services were 1,500, but we didn't collect all 1500 up front. We're going to collect the rest of it down the road. We only collected 500 immediately in cash. So here we have two different assets being increased, a $500 to cash and $1,000 to accounts receivable. We received cash right away, and the other 1000 is set up as an accounts receivable. It's another asset. We know we're going to have a, a benefit down the road when we receive it. So that's $1,500 total increase to assets. The other $1,500 is going to increase revenues. We're showing the fact that we have an increase to revenues. We're, we've earned it. That's the key piece. So what we're doing there is cash and accounts receivables. They're both assets. We want to increase both of them. So we use the normal debit balance. We're debiting cash, debiting accounts receivable for the respective amounts. Revenues are under the clerk mnemonic. We want to increase them, so we use the normal credit balance to increase them. We're crediting revenues for $1,500 to increase them. Debits and credits are in balance. Even though we have two debits and one credit, the dollar amounts are in balance. So the next one we want to talk about a bit here, transaction five, the company received a bill of $250 for this month's telephone service. 
which is due to be paid next month. Now, this is a key statement. The bill is for this month's telephone service. Therefore, we're going to have an expense that we have to record. It's related to this month. We want to record it this month. And it's due to be paid next month, but we have not paid it yet. It's not a cash payment. Instead, it's going to be an accounts payable, or they might have a specific account for this telephone payable. You want to look at your problem and see what account names do they use. So we have a liability increase to, again, telephone payable, accounts payable, whatever account name they use. That increases the liability. But we also have to increase the telephone expense itself, which, remember, that actually decreases equity. So that means assets had nothing to do with this. So liabilities have to net out to zero, or liabilities and equity have to net out to zero. We have an increase to a liability and a decrease to equity via the increase to expense. So that's what we're doing here, increasing liabilities, decreasing equity for the same amount. Expense is a normal debit balance. So we debit the expense for 250. So to increase the expense, we use the debit balance. We want to increase the liability as well. So we have to use its normal balance, which is a credit. We credit telephone payable for 250. So we're in balance. We're good to go there. Transaction number six. Here we paid off some amount of a loan that we had previously taken out. So it's going to obviously relate to the loan, and it's going to be a cash payment for the company. Cash is an asset that's going to be decreased here. And the notes payable liability is also decreasing because we're paying some of it off. So we have a decrease to both assets and liabilities. We're still in balance. Now, both of these accounts are decreasing, so we have to use the opposite of their normal balances. For the cash, it's an asset, it has a normal debit balance, but we would have to use the opposite, a credit, to decrease it. Credit to cash for 2000 No, it's payable as a liability. It has a normal credit balance, but we want to decrease it, so we have to use the opposite of its normal balance. We have to debit that account for $2,000. So we're debiting notes payable to decrease it, crediting cash to decrease that, we're still in balance. Now let's look at transaction number seven here. The company sold a parcel of land worth $10,000 with no gain or loss. Now this is a more complicated uh, topic down the road. If we did have a gain or loss, we will certainly talk about it in a later video, but for now we're just talking about selling land in general. So the land itself is being sold, it's being decreased from the company, and it's it was on the books at $10,000, and we're selling it apparently at the exact same amount because there's no gain or loss. So we're, we're receiving cash. They didn't tell us anything else. We must be receiving cash. So we're increasing the cash asset for 10000 decreasing the land asset for $10,000. We're nothing related to liabilities or equity. It's all a zero impact in total to cash. To increase cash, we use its normal balance, which is a debit. To increase, to decrease land, we use the opposite of its normal balance. It had a debit balance because it also is an asset, so we have to credit it to reduce it. Transaction number eight, the company paid off $500 of a previous purchase they had made for supplies. So they already have some sort of account set up. We're going to assume it's accounts payable. That's usually what is used for the supplies. And if you recall a previous video, uh, we talked about that supplies purchase anyways. And now we're paying off $500 of that amount. So the company paid off $500. They're paying in cash, $500. And they're not going to owe as much now because they paid some off. So there's going to be a decrease to cash here. 
it's an asset. We're decreasing the cash asset, but we're also decreasing the accounts payable liability. So we're still in balance. Both sides of the equation are decreasing by the same amount. To decrease cash, we use the opposite of its debit balance, so we credit it. Credit cash 500. Accounts payables have their liability. They have a normal credit balance, but we have to use the opposite to decrease it, so we debit accounts payable for $500. Transaction number nine. The company purchased $750 worth of inventory on account. Again, that key phrase, on account, that means we're not paying cash right away. Inventory is considered an asset. It's being increased in the company. So we have an increase to the inventory asset for $750 and an increase to the accounts payable liability for $750. We're still in balance. Nothing to do with revenues or any of the other equity components. Inventory is an asset which has a normal debit balance, and we're debiting it to increase it. Accounts payable is a liability that has a normal credit balance, so we're crediting accounts payable to increase that, and we are still in balance. Finally, we come up to transaction number 10. Here, cash dividends of $1,500 were paid to stockholders, and what I want to stress here First of all, is that dividends are not an expense account. They are a separate account that reduces equity similar to expenses, but they're not an expense account. It's money being paid out to the owners. It's not being paid for any other expense or anything like that. It's a re reduction of capital, a reduction of the, the equity of the company because we're paying it back to the owners who originally paid money in. So cash dividends of $1,500 were paid. There's going to be a cash entry, of course, and there's going to be a dividend re uh, recording. $1,500. So a $1,500 cash reduction. It's an asset reduction here. Now the dividends. This is similar to the idea of the expense because both, when increased, decrease equity. They have minus signs in front of them. So that's why we're trying to increase dividends itself. That's why I'm putting a, a positive $1,500 here. But the impact is to decrease equity, which offsets the decrease to the asset. So let's go from left to right. Cash is an asset. We want to decrease it by using the opposite of its normal debit balance, which says we have to credit it. Dividends we want to increase here. Dividends were the third one in the dead mnemonic. They have a normal debit balance, and we're trying to increase it, so we use a debit balance. We debit dividends for $1,500. We credit cash for $1,500. We are still in balance. Now, that takes us through our 10 journal entries for this video in the series. Again, we're going to continue on with this series. We have about 20 different videos we're going to be going through with progressively more complicated journal entries. The idea is that by the time you go through these 20 videos, if you take the time to practice them, that should really set you up for what you're going to need, certainly for the first accounting course or two, and then that'll prepare you for any use of journal entries in later courses as well, of course, as well as real life. So hopefully this has helped to clarify some of these. I thank you for your time, and I'll talk to you in the next video in the series.